don't think it's unfair to say that at the current moment, DC Comics are less successful than Marvel. Until recently, the last decade of their movies have been largely panned, and it's hard to deny the cultural importance of the MCU, even if Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman are still probably the biggest superhero names. But DC Comics holds a special place in my heart nonetheless, though it's likely not for the reasons that they would like. I love DC Comics for the same reasons many of my friends consider them Marvel's red-headed stepsister. The bullshit. I love that they haven't been able to figure out a canon for Themyscira that honors Wonder Woman while sidestepping that she was created by a bondage-obsessed psychologist with stranger theories than Sigmund Freud. I love that they have more people whose special power is speed than a Sonic fanfiction. And my favorite character is Zatanna for two big reasons. She's a stage magician who's also a real magician. Please be good, please be good, please be good. In my opinion, there is no part of DC that is delightfully weird as the anti-life equation, which drives me more insane every time I think about it. Anti-life is the signature weapon of Darkseid. If you don't know who that is, he's basically DC's Thanos and the anti-life is his infinity gauntlet. If you do know who Darkseid is, I'm probably on your shit list for saying that. Now, when Jack Kirby created him, it was a nebulous concept, a tool that could be used to dominate the will of all sentient and sapient creatures, making it the equation to produce anti-life, because if you have no free will, are you really alive? That worked. It was good. This is comics. We can't leave it at that. Since those days, the anti-life equation has been expanded upon and become much more literal. Now it's a mathematical proof that life is meaningless, free will is a lie, and this realization yokes you to the user's will. And this is where the fun begins. I say the user because some smaller villains have mind control powers due to possessing fragments of the equation, which isn't how math works. You can't take the middle of an equation and get part of the right answer. I don't think at least. I only took one math class in college, but... If I tried to turn in a half-completed question, I sure as hell didn't get the point. Not sure why they haven't lost their free will either. However, before I get into the equation itself, I want to address that fundamental concept. That if you prove to me that life is meaningless and without choice, that you could control me. No. Let's say that I don't have free will. That all my actions are predetermined. Unless you're the one leaving fate, in which case you shouldn't need to prove anything to me. That doesn't mean that you can direct me. It means my predetermined destiny was to make this video, which is, frankly, a wild thing for any higher being to make me do. But that's too big a rabbit hole for this video. But let's say for the sake of argument that it does work that way. That if you can prove life is meaningless, you can control it. What about nihilists? They already believe that life is meaningless. Are they already under Darkseed's command? Darkseed, why are you making Kevin sit in his room listening to My Chemical Romance? How does this benefit your evil schemes? What about people who believe in fortune telling? If your fortune is to fall in love with a dark billionaire, your fortune teller needs to put down Fifty Shades of Grey. But also, your choice has just been taken out of that equation. If it's destiny, it'll happen whether or not you choose it. So, can Darkseed automatically take control of your hairdresser that won't stop talking about astrology? Supposedly the anti-life equation is too complicated for a mortal mind to understand anyways, so how does teaching me something I can't understand prove anything to me? My understanding may not be relevant to the truth of quantum physics, but if anti-life takes my free will by proving to me it doesn't exist, I need to be able to understand that proof. Let's talk about that too complicated part, though, because they've actually quantified the equation. If you don't want to lose your free will, turn off the video now. Just kidding. This relies on the metaphysics of the DC Universe, where Superman can hear a supersonic watch from across the galaxy. If you got Iseki, though, this would let you totally control anyone. Fanfic writers, feel free to credit me. Anti-life is loneliness plus alienation plus fear plus despair plus self-worth divided by mockery, divided by condemnation, divided by misunderstanding, times guilt, times shame, times failure, times judgment, n equals y, where y equals hope, and n equals folly, love equals lies, life equals death, self equals dark side. Which is hilarious. 
What does it say about the DC education system, by the way, that this middle school math is too complicated for mortals to understand? This is just addition, multiplication, and division. There's not even subtraction. Sure, they don't use any parentheses, but this is what order of operations is for. In fairness, I'll set aside the question of how we're supposed to numerically represent the abstract emotion-driven concepts of things like loneliness and guilt. Maybe that's what mortal minds can't understand? But I would say that Darkseed doesn't understand math either. The division part makes a bit of sense. Self-worth is getting torn to shreds by getting divided by mockery, then condemnation, then misunderstanding. But then we start increasing the value of self-worth again. Only now it's because we're multiplying it by guilt, shame, failure, and judgment. I've dealt with guilt. Under no circumstances should your self-worth be multiplied by it. And if it somehow is, your self-worth is now increasing, which doesn't sound like proving the meaninglessness of life to me. You could say that the greater your self-respect, the greater your guilt will be, except that unless you have very high self-worth and very little mockery, condemnation, and misunderstanding, all of those divide steps will have likely shredded your self-worth to a number below one, meaning that it'll actually reduce your guilt. And if you are that corner case, then once again, I don't think we're going to be proving that life is pointless. You sound like you have your shit together. All of that aside, the final answer is just going to be a number. What does that prove? Certainly not the word salad that follows n equals y, where y equals hope and n equals folly. Now these two variables are the most common representations of the result of an equation, which, if we follow this interpretation, means that the answer to anti-life is actually hope. Because n equals y, so they're supposedly the same thing. But here's the thing, Darkseed, you haven't actually proved that! Like all the other wild assertions you're about to make, you're just throwing out claims and hoping we'll accept them. There is no equation for the other, it's just a floating variable. Neither n nor y show up in the equation at all, and only one of them can be the answer. Any other added variable names are just erroneous. You could technically take every variable representative not used in an equation and add it to the end of yours, that y also equals that because you're just setting your variables. If y minus two over four equals 10, then y equals 42. And I could say that y equals x and y equals z. So x and z equal 42, as well as every other letter. We don't do that because it's utterly pointless. In order for both n and y to be relevant, we would need to find the mathematical equation for hope or folly whichever one ha we haven't already represented, and with shared variables, prove that no matter what valid input you gave, the results would be the same. Darkseed, you haven't done this. You haven't done anything. Get used to this issue, because that's everything that follows. Darkseed, you can't just start tacking on unsupported equivalencies to the end of your equation. The Pythagorean theorem lets me find the missing side of a right triangle, but it does not then let me automatically declare its area as well. That has to be proved separately, because a wild assertion could be wrong! Saying something equals y doesn't make that true. y is just a mathematical representation of whatever, and it's only valid so long as whatever is actually true. <sighs> It's time to get excited though, folks, because now we get to add grammar to this discussion. The equation says where n equals y, and that phrasing is important because what that actually means is that the rest of the equation is only true if all of those other equivalencies are true. It doesn't actually mean that they are, and as we just covered, there is no proof that they are. If even one person truly loves another, then love does not equal lies, and the where is false, making the whole equation useless. If someone doesn't perceive life and death as the same thing, which on a very literal level they are not, it doesn't work. 
If someone doesn't have a dark side, then the equation falls apart. And may I point out that if you are openly evil and have no good in you, then you don't have a dark side, you're just dark. We can try to debate if anyone is truly evil in the real world, but this is comics. There are characters that are just evil. And even then, granting your premise for the sake of argument, let's say that you did somehow prove that hope equals folly. That doesn't mean life is meaningless, or that free will is an illusion. Plenty of people base their lives around the idea that you can't just hope for something. You need to make an effort, and that hoping is just wasted energy. Their lives aren't pointless. In fact, they're often quite successful. Darkseed, your formula is shit, and you need to go back to grade school. Relearn algebra. A final note. How does one fight the anti-life equation? Why, with the life equation, of course. Mathematical proof that life and free will have meaning, which, if we accept both formulas as true, creates a paradox, and I'm not sure if math can handle that. I never took calculus, but it certainly seems it should at the very least deprive either equation of any metaphysical powers. Companionship plus understanding plus assurance plus joy plus altruism divided by respect divided by commendation divided by sympathy times innocence times dignity times success times acceptance n equals y where y equals despair and n equals caution love equals truth death equals rebirth and self equals light side now this is clearly just a mirror to anti-life so it has all the same farcical flaws Except that the White Lantern can alter it freely, which is another wormhole that's too deep to go down right now. I'm not going to repeat myself. Instead, I just want to point this out. In the life equation, we divide by respect, commendation, and sympathy. So the more of these things you have, the less life you get, I guess? I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid you were too respectful. You have three months to live. Well, dang. Thanks for telling me, Doc. No, wait, don't! So, yeah. Using math as a conceptual weapon is shaky at best and hilariously nonsensical at worst. And I love it. Thanks for watch- Oh, shit!